Hello and welcome to News Click. News Click published a story written by Abhir Das Gupta and Paranjay Guha Thakurta, which talked about how change in government's cabotage policy might help a specific group, mainly Adani, and other private players, and would be a death knell for the government-owned biggest port in India. To discuss more about the story, we are joined by one of the authors, Paranjay Guha Thakurta. Welcome to News Click. Paranjay. Thank you, Paranjal. So let's start with the Adani part first. That or should I start with the cabotage part first? Okay, let's start with the cabotage part first. It's so. important to explain what is cabotage mm. because this word doesn't, you know, a lot of people don't understand what it is. Right. Cabotage is when you are trans transporting by ship goods from one port in the same country to another port in the same country. Now, there are certain rules and certain laws and certain rules that exist for all in all such countries which have long coastlines, whether it be China, whether it be the United States. And it's important to draw a parallel between international shipping where anybody is free, whether it doesn't matter what your flag is. You can be an Indian ship owner, you could be a ship owner from some other part of the world. But cabotage rules everywhere across the world are meant to protect the domestic industry and domestic ship owners. You know, the analogy can be dropped between, say, airline travel. Because if you're a foreign airline, you can't regularly operate flights within a particular country. There could be specific circumstances under which you did. So that's essentially the cabotage rules. And, and, and what has happened is that the government has had these rules. They've been controversial. People have had different points of view. And they've been relaxed by a new notification. So can you throw some light on that notification? How have they been relaxed? On the 21st of May, the Ministry of Shipping, Government of India, issued a notification that relaxed the restrictions on the movement of foreign ships that are engaged in transporting containers, either filled with goods or empty containers between and among Indian ports along the country's coastline. Now, this is perhaps the single most important policy decision in the shipping industry taken by this government in the four years that it has been around. Now, what is going to happen is that this is paving the way to tilt the balance from Indian ship owners to foreign ship owners. And those Indian shipping companies who have close association with foreign shipping companies. It's also going to tilt the balance from government-owned ports to private-owned ports. Now, the single biggest beneficiary of this move is going to be the Adani Group because not only does it have associations and partnerships with foreign shipping lines, it also is the single biggest owner of ports across the country from the west coast to the east coast. This is what uh, I have described in the article is like a string of pearls. That's right. Uh, I've used the analogy from uh, the Chinese analogy. The chi China doesn't agree with this uh, analogy, but for geopolitical reasons and geostrategic reasons, this is a theory to describe how China has a strategy of developing port facilities across the coast, across the Chinese coast, South Asia, Colombo, West Asia, all the way up to Sudan in Africa. So, uh, can we say that this policy change has been brought specifically to help Mr. Adani because, as you mentioned in the article, in the previous regime, this was not there, right? You know, over the last several years, there's been a lot of flip-flops. There have been lobby groups. There's been the Indian National Ship Owners Association. They issue no objection certificates. It's only when they issue no, no obj objection certificate that a foreign ship can transport goods from one port in India to another port in India. That is, the, the INSA, Indian National Ship Owners Association, first ascertain whether an Indian-owned ship is available. And only if it is not available will they give it to a foreign ship. Now, this has completely been done away with gradually over a period of time. Now, what has happened is earlier there have been a lot of debate, discussion, whether it's good, not just for the country's economy, but also for the country's security interests. Because these Indian ship owners, they may be at a disadvantage. They may have to pay higher taxes. They may have to pay higher prices for fuel. The, their cost of credit from banks is higher. But they also employ more Indians. They, they employ more Indian seafarers. And, and at the end of the day, the Indian economy benefits. 
whereas the a foreign ship owner is under no such ob obligation so what has happened is that as the single largest operator of ports in the private sector the adani group it is going to be the biggest beneficiary it at present directly controls the activities of nine ports that are located along both the west and the eastern coastlines mundra tuna tekra that's one is an internal port one is an external then you have dahej hazira all of these are in gujarat then you have marmagao in goa then you have enor and kattupalli both in tamil nadu then you have vizag or vishakhapatnam in andhra pradesh and dhamra in odisha but that's not all this list is scheduled to go up because the adani group is currently building the vizhingam port in kerala it is also awarded a been awarded the contract to build the bhavan padu port in andhra pradesh and it is proposed that it will build a port in west bengal in kulpi so in a sense it will control ports all across the country it's in taco slide so basically it's also going to hamper the indian uh, port agencies port companies when you talk about insa did insa have any objection to this entire uh, policy change absolutely they were dead opposed to it and they said this is going to be exact words disastrous for the country's economy and the letter that has been given by insa uh, the opinion it earlier sought from mr soli sorab ji who was a former solicitor sorry attorney general of india during the vajpayee government is an eminent lawyer is a senior advocate his view and all that is given in the article and if you go through it you will understand why they they have been lobbying and against the insa which is one lobby group you have another lobby group which is clsa the coastal lines shipping association that represent some of these foreign shipping lines and after the notification was issued they have issued a statement which has also been uh, put out in the article which says that this is going to be very very bad for the country's economy in a sense they have also argued that uh, that this is going to ruin not just the indian ship owners and it also may have an impact on employment and and this goes completely contrary to the spirit of mr what mr narendra modi has been saying make in india you are actually going to deprive indian companies of good business so in the article you mention a sub section called level playing field on neo colonialism can you throw some that light some light on that section because according to the article it will be difficult for the indian companies to match the tariff rates right correct you see what i've said that this has got nothing to do with the license control raj everywhere in the in the world whether it be china or in the united states of america or bangladesh they give a certain amount of quote unquote protection to their domestic shipping lines and this is supposed to be not just good for the economy it's good for the national security of the country why let me explain it has been pointed out that okay indian ship owners are inefficient they have to pay more their costs are higher their fuel costs are higher they have to pay higher taxes their cost of credit is higher all that is accepted so they can't really compete effectively with the international shipping lines but this has been a situation that has been created over a period of time in fact if you look at just not all kinds of kind of shipping but if you just look at what we say containerized shipping and if you just look at because the present relaxation of the rules is largely to do with containerized shipping i i'll just give you uh, one uh, set of statistics it shows that how in the 1990s the proportion of indian trade containerized trade that was carried by indian ships and flagship was around 42% and this has now come down the proportion of trade carried by indian ships has come down to less than 8% so they are already in such a weak position and after this it's going to be weaker and and i must tell you another thing uh, as far as mr modi is concerned he has been consistent i mean right through even from the time he was chief minister of gujarat and under his tenure when the gujarat maritime board had been set up which is the regulator at a state government level at the state level he had demanded the relaxation of cabotage rules can you also throw some light on what's going to happen to jnpt because it's india's largest government owned port right that's right see what is happening is on the west coast the biggest ports are jnpt and mundra now you're going to buy having this guy you know, a large ship will like to berth at one port it won't go to both ports 
And once a large ship berths at a port, then its cargo is offloaded and smaller, what are called feeders, will transport by ship or by other means of transport the goods to other parts of the country in that region. Similarly, when you are sort of, say this is for, say, import, imported goods that you're importing, but suppose it's export. Similarly, you know, you uh, gather the goods from various parts of that region, you aggregate it, and then you put it on smaller ships and you finally go to uh, and, and load it onto a big ship. There'll be no incentive for a foreign ship owner to come to JNPT or the Jawaharlal Airport. Port trust. So, in a sense, it's a kind of cannibalization. And JNPT is likely to lose at the expense of Mundra. Now, you can say JNPT is inefficient, JNPT is not doing well, it deserves to, you know, do badly. Uh, uh, and, and this is um, the rules of the market, free market competition. But then it's also going against Mr. Modi's own claims that he wants to support Indian industry and, and his whole uh, slogan of make in India. Because what is now likely to happen with the new rules is even the foreign shipping companies would engage in what is called predatory pricing. They undercut the Indian ship owners. They have deep pockets and they want to drive out the Indian companies from business and therefore they will start dominating the market. This is the apprehension. So you've also sent a questionnaire to Mr. Adani and asking about the revenue projections. Have they replied back? And if no, then what are your estimates that how much profit are the Adani groups going to make? This is a difficult question to answer. I can't answer. All I can say is that, you know, me and my colleague Abhij Das Gupta, we had been working on this article for some time now because I'm working on a book on the Adani group. And, you know, uh, first we send him, uh, him and his, his team a questionnaire on the 20th of April. And then after this notification came on the 21st of May, two days later on the 23rd of May, we sent him another questionnaire seeking a whole lot of, uh, I mean, uh, seeking answers and reactions to a whole lot of questions. Because these, one of the major companies in his group, which is APSEZ, Adani Ports and Special Economic Zone, is likely to be a big beneficiary. And this company and other companies in the Adani group have tie up with some of the biggest shipping companies in the world, like Mediterranean Shipping Company, like CMA, CGM, DP World. And, and they are like the biggest players in the world. So I've been trying to ask them, did they seek their support? How was the lobbying going on? Because, you know, this lobbying has been going on for four years, but it's finally happening one year before the elections. The question you ask, revenue projections? I don't know. But there is every indication that uh, the group may benefit considerably. In the last story that you wrote for NewsClick, which talked about Mr. Ambani and the tax havens, you said in the end, in an interview, that's that's it's just a tip of the iceberg is is there something like this when it comes to the story <laughs> i as don't well? know uh, you know after one writes this story all kinds of people start approaching you so after this article was published uh, by news click which was uh, just on uh, just very very recently on on friday i have <laughs> lots of people are saying yes there is more to the story and uh, one angle which people are talking about which they say needs to be emphasized. Everybody's saying, you've written too long a story. Who's going to read 6,500 words? I said, no, just read the summary. It's right up front. But they're saying uh, there is a lot on the national security angle which can be elaborated on. And remember, at one point of time, uh, their current position is not known, but the National Security Council and the Prime Minister's office had expressed apprehension about the relaxation of these rules. So I think, yes, there may be more to the story. Hopefully, Paranjay, when these things will come out more and hopefully we'll again sit here and discuss that national security angle with you once again. Thanks a lot for giving Thank us Thank you for time. giving us, uh, for speaking with me. Thank you for watching NewsClick.